My favorite example of artifact SETI comes from a paper by Luke Arnold in 2005. And he argued that spacefaring civilizations that need a huge amount of energy will build mega engineering projects around their stars. So K2 civilizations need to build big solar collectors, big energy radiators, and we should be able to see these in silhouette when they pass in front of the star. And so he pointed out that the Kepler spacecraft would be very sensitive to this sort of thing. So as a toy model, he said, imagine that there was some big engineering project that was not a circle. It, was, it, it wasn't a disk. It wasn't a sphere. Planets are spheres, and so they have uh, circular cross sections. So when a planet passes in front of the star, there's a characteristic signature of that. If you had something other than a circle, like a triangle, just not because they'd build triangles, but because it's not a circle, then the difference between the signal Kepler would see between the triangle and the circle had a characteristic signature, and that difference was detectable. Kepler could tell the difference between circles and non-circles. So Kepler would actually be very good at detecting mega engineering projects around other stars. He went further and pointed out that as long as you're building these things and you know Earthlings and other aliens can see them. You could even do something clever, like make your mega engineering project have some funny shape to communicate information and say, not just I'm not a circle, but something interesting, like I have lots of louvers that maybe can change and signal you. Maybe you would arrange the objects in a pattern. First one goes in front of the star, then two, then three, then five. And so you have some sort of prime number sequence going on that's clearly of extraterrestrial intelligence. So it's a neat way that you would signal, and it doesn't require you to transmit in radio waves. And it would last a very long time. So it was a neat little paper, a cute idea. And it basically predicted, it said, look, if Kepler's looking at something and you see transit depths that are changing by a factor of five every time the thing goes around, maybe what you're really looking at is an assortment of uh, signaling um, objects. So I thought it was pretty interesting when in 2012, Rappaport et al. published the discovery of a transiting object around a star whose transit depths varied by a factor of five. <laughs> now, they didn't happen in the pattern that Luke Arnold predicted, but it was basically what he was talking about. Now, this is generally, the, the, um, the explanation for this that Rappaport came up with is that this is an evaporating planet. The planet is losing material, and that material is in a big tail behind the planet. It's a turbulent tail. Sometimes it's thick, sometimes it's thin. And so you see variable amounts of obscuration due to that object. Um, but it's interesting that Luke Arnold almost predicted this. 